Hi everyone, welcome to Research MD. This is uh, Dr. Pramil Charya, the Chief Medical Officer in the United States, also an Associate Professor of Medicine, Program Director, Director of Research. Uh, so today um, we're going to be uh, talking to Dr. Vinod Nukala, is our Chief Guest, uh, is uh, also an Associate Professor of Medicine with the uh, a um, large academic institution in the United States. Um, have done a lot of research, <clears throat> many, many publications, uh, presented many conferences. So welcome, Dr. Nokala. Thank today. you, thank you so much. It's okay. an honor to be All part right. of this. Very good. So today we're going to talk about this a very, very important study, scary study published in JAMA uh, Ophthalmology <clears throat> about uh, Ozambic or Vigovi, which is called a semi -glutide, right? So the title is like, when wait in sight, watch your eyesight, okay? So we're going to go through this article, and then at the end we will talk about a discussion with the Dr. Nukal about this article, okay? Now, <clears throat> when you look at the weight loss drug, is uh, the industry is exploding like crazy. Everyone is buying weight loss drug. You look at the celebrities, even Elon Musk admitted he was taking some of this drug and he cannot even find it. There are people taking illegally also, legal market, 6% of the Americans used it, okay? So the weight loss drug industry in the United States and all over the world is on fire. Every year or every day you're talking about, you know, people looking for this drug, there's a shortage and the price can vary. In the United States, they charge too much. In the other countries, not as much, but it's a big shortage now, okay? So, we look at it, there's almost like, you know, if we look at the prescription by the doctor, 60% increase in the past three years, okay? And then if you look at this another slide right here, you got the weight loss drug, you can just see the market size, how big it is. The number one drug is in the United States is Viagra, <clears throat> so, but this is going to take over, okay? Now, why are we worried? I mean, we talk about the, in this JAMA study, they were talking about the relationship with the semiglutide, which is also and Vigovi, the brand name, and the relationship with the eye, eye loss, or vision loss, I should say, okay? So there's this called, you know, arteriotic, anterior, or ischemic optic neuropathy, which is called N-A-I-O-N. This is the second most common cause of blindness, usually age 50 and above, and it's a painless loss of vision, okay? So when you look about it again, we talk about the 50 years of age, uh, about estimated annual incident in the United States around 2.3 to 10.2. And uh, again, if you want to see a description, it's an acute, painless, I already said that, unilateral loss of vision. It can all occur from over hours to days, blurring, dimness or cloudiness in the affected region of the visual field. And then what they noticed was like, if you started having this eye, most likely the symptoms can present in the other eye, so be careful, okay? So pathogenesis, nobody know what, not very clear. A lot of times it's the decreased blood supply to this optic nerve and all these eye vessels and all of that, okay? Risk factors could be like high blood pressure, nocturnal systemic hypotension. Uh, a lot of this phosphor diastrase inhibitors like Viagra also can affect it. So imagine number one selling drug Viagra and number one selling drug awesome big kind of interacting, so be careful. So diabetes, hypertension, so multiple risk factors could be contributing it. Okay, now, JAMA Ophthalmology published a great article, okay, just came out. So, <clears throat> um, I have this article <coughs> right here. The title is Role of a Known Arteritic Anterior Ischemic Optic Neuropathy in Patients Prescribed Semiglutide. Okay, and the studies have shown, let's go look at the study and then we'll talk about, we'll discuss with the doctor, no color. Okay, okay, this study, let's look at, let's appreciate the authors. Um, Jimena Tatiana Hathaway, MD, is the primary author. Let's recognize the um, senior author, Tays Estrella. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Trey, I mean, it's Joseph F. Riso III is the senior author on the study. And it came out of a great place, Harvard T. Chan School of Public Health. Pay attention when these people talk from this organization. Now, they took <clears throat> a lot of people and they put them into the two groups, type 2 diabetes and overweight. So some people have type 2 diabetes, so we know this drug usually 
people with the diabetes and also people with overweight. And then <clears throat> some of them have semi-glutide exposure, but some of them don't have it. So if you can see the numbers in type 2 diabetes, around 710 patients, overweight here, 979 patients. And then significant results, uh, type 2 diabetes, the hazard ratio is 4.28, and among overweight is 7.64, and the p-value is statistically significant, my friend, okay? So in this thing, what they did, they did the Kaplan-Myers curve to look at the survival. They watched this around almost like six years, and look at the curve. The difference is very, very significant, and then he got the um, uh, H, I mean, you know, the uh, hassle ratio. We looked at it's 4.28 and then 7.64. Um, so, <clears throat> now, let's look at, like, um, you know, when you look at it, the strength of the study. Now, when you look at the strength of the study, or multiple strength of the study, I think, you know, it's coming from, I have it right here, Harvard T.H. Chan, the School of Public Health, Usually pay attention, these people are smart, Harvard people, right? So very good study. Statistical analysis is excellent on the study. So people, I mean, have taken the time to do the analysis, okay? Unique idea, like, I mean, all of a sudden, everybody's talking about the good uh, side and somebody's looking at the ugly side of any drug. We need to do that, that make us better. Large number of patients, you got almost like 1,700 or 1,600, close to that, was make it like good. And uh, they adjust for like, I mean, I think when I looked at this article, what I found, they even adjust for this uh, COVID area, some, you know, phosphodiesterase inhibitors like Viagra, they are just for amiodarone. <clears throat> That's like you have to give like obstructive sleep apnea, hypertension. So they did take the study into the next level, adjusting for all this covariance, my friend, and then they did the study. So statistically significant, okay? Before we go into the study, um, let's see like uh, the limitations. Let's um, bring Dr. Nukala in, have a discussion about the study. So uh, we got Dr. Nukala, again, extraordinary brain power to analyze our st uh, study. Uh, Dr. Nukala, what do you think about this article? Maybe you can kind of tell us, teach us, what are the weakness you found in this Thank study? Thank you so much, Dr. Charit. I've been following your videos since day one, and I'm your strong, big follower of this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, see, there are always two sides of the coin. <clears throat> look at the other side. If you look at the hazard ratio, we're talking about, this is just an observation study. This is partly funded by the Optic uh, Society uh, research to prevent blindness. That could be a little bit of confounding, but I'm not sure how much uh, role they had. And look at the hazard ratio, and even before looking at the hazard ratio, look at the numbers. You have 600, 700 patients, and then you have like three patients with the uh, anti ischemic neuropathy, six patients, 20 patients, and just by looking at the hazard ratio alone, you also look at all the different sides. Look at, if you look at the graph, the why is there another picture inside the uh, graph that is a zoomed picture of the, of the graph to look at the difference a little larger? So ideally you have to look at, pay attention to the x-axis and y-axis also. Pay attention from zero to 100 and see the difference. And when you blow up, when you zoom in, the difference will be high. And when you look at the difference, you think, wow, this is a great uh, uh, significant difference. And look at the conference interval. This is the worst conference interval I have ever seen. From two, it ranges anywhere from hazard ratio to 2 to 26. It means it's twice uh, at risk or it's up to 26 times at risk. And the same thing you're looking at uh, hazard ratio 4.2, again, conference interval 1 to 11. So this is the worst conference interval I have seen. And this is just an observation study. And the difference is not that great. The number of patients are not that high. So do I have to practice, uh, uh, do I have to change my practice just because based on this study, 
I don't think so. So, Dr. Cheryat, good luck. I <laughs> disagree with the Dr. Nuka. There are a lot of things on this. But I agree with him about the confidence in terms Great point. Because a lot of people fail to pay attention. They look at the p-value, forget the confidence interval, look at the variability. It's almost like wide as football field, right? What does that say? It's not anytime if the confidence interval is very narrow, that's a very strong study, okay? So that means a lot of covariates uh, are playing a role. Variability is high. From my standpoint, my friends, we should be worried, okay? Even though it's observational study, you can calculate the best way to do an analysis, best way to critique is the number needed to harm. So we did do a calculation on number needed to harm. That means every 17 patients take, one person can have this deadliest complication. I agree this is an observational study, but I will be very careful. Um, you know, the study is coming from uh, the big names in the United States. Harvard T. T Chan, come on, they don't make small studies, Dr. Nukala. And they did like, a, you know, when you look at this Cox, um, uh, uh, I mean, hazard ratio, they are just for all the covariates. You know, when I look at it, my concern is they should have adjusted for, they have adjusted for hypertension, but studies have shown like nighttime hypotension. When you aggressively treat somebody with uh, blood pressure and, and your blood pressure comes low, that decreases the blood supply and that has to some, something to do with it. So, I, you know, they should have adjusted for this hypotension. And also, you know, we talked about uh, some of the other things, uh, you know, I have written down over here. Let me just kind of look at it like what I have written down. Um, the homocysteine levels, <clears throat> they should have checked all these people like homo, the studies have shown increased homocysteine level, there is an association. They could have taken the homocysteine and adjusted as one of the co-variables. We already talked about, um, you know, the other, I have to congratulate the others on obstructive sleep apnea, they did adjust for that. And the one drug, you know, there's a lot of studies on interferon therapy can cause this, uh, um, you know, the uh, known arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So even though it's an observational study, more studies definitely, I agree with the Dr. Noka, like we cannot take observational as this. Uh, that's like going back, like, uh, you know, you take the last month's weather and try to predict this month's weather. You cannot do that, right? But, you know, strength is, they did look for like uh, six years of study. Again, big names are here, and uh, but we should be concerned, right? I mean, in the study, they should have, when, the, when they do in the future, you have to do randomized control studies, and please, please, uh, just for all the covariates, we talked about it, and, um, you know, we'll be back with another presentation soon. I'd like to yeah. thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. For Nukala, for inviting. joining us. It was okay. great. Let's Come look at you. our next article, and I hope um, everybody continues to support our channel and because without your support, we are this zero, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. God bless thank everyone. You.